Okay, yeah, so today um, is Wednesday the 7th, and uh, we've got a quiz this Friday on sections 4, 3, 4, 4, and 4, 5, and we've got homework due Monday the 12th uh, on sections 5, 1, 5, 2, 5, 3. Next Friday we've got quiz a quiz on those three sections, and then it seems like it has only been just yesterday that we had the last test, but the following week we have the next test on chapters three and five, or three, four, and five, sorry. Um, so we are, we're coming down to the end here. Um, really are coming down to the end of it. It's been, what, two weeks, three weeks since our previous test now? And uh, yeah, so the next one's in two weeks, and I'll do basically the same thing that we did last time, where it's open for 48 hours, and you, you can just take it as you see, or you know, whenever you've got time in those 20, in those 48 hours. Um, it'll still be timed. I'll give you still two and a half hours to do it with an extra 30 minutes, say, to scan and upload. Last time, there were no issues with people scanning and uploading, except that some people couldn't scan, so they took pictures. That worked fine. Um, you just There's a bit more work for you in uploading all the pictures, and then there's a bit more work for me in grading and going from picture to picture, um, but it was fine. Uh, there were, um, there still are an outstanding, not, not a small number of outstanding tests that need to be taken. Um, so if you're one of those watching, please, get on that. Read your emails. You've received them. <laughs> uh, but for everybody else, it, it went well. I, I would say overall it went really well. So um, we'll go ahead and get started then on today. So we are talking about section 5.1 first. 5.1 is about the unit circle. And since very few people have uh, watch the lecture. I'm going to go ahead and give a bit of, of just an intro here. So here I've drawn a circle and the center of this circle is right at the origin. So this point here, right in the middle, is 0, 0. And this is a unit circle, so it has radius 1. And if, you've, if you're the one person that's watched the lectures, this point right here is the one that I consistently, <laughs> just off the top of my head, consistently uh, mistake for the origin. I don't know why. I, but this is the point 1, 0. So it's the unit circle, which means the radius is a unit length. So it's just one unit. So we've got these other points here that are really easy to describe. This one's 0, 1. This one here is negative 1, 0. And this one at the bottom is 0, negative 1. And all of these points along here are also exactly one unit away from the origin. So the equation for the circle is this x squared plus y squared is 1. Okay, it's got the center 0, 0, so we take x minus 0 squared, we add that to y minus 0 squared, and the radius is 1, so we that's, this whole thing is equal to 1 squared. This is just your typical circle equation with this center and this radius. Okay, so that's stuff from, from previous sections that we've studied. Um, this equation, though, helps us to determine quite a lot about uh, certain points that may or may not be on the, the circle. And so there are some really, really easy ones um, and some that are not so easy. So certain questions from this section, for example, question number three, they ask if a given point is on the unit circle. So how about this one? Three-fifths, comma, negative four-fifths. So how do we check if a point is on the unit circle or not? Well, we need to check 
that if we square the x and if we square the y, we do in fact get 1. That's all. Okay, so th there's, a fair, there's a fair bit of checking this in the lecture and there's a fair bit of doing problems like this in the lecture too. So let's just do one. Um, so 3 fifths, we're going to square that. We're going to add that to negative 4 fifths squared. And I'm not going to write 1 yet, because we don't know. That's, that's what we're checking. We need to make sure that this does equal 1. Because maybe it doesn't. And if it doesn't equal 1, then this point is not on the unit circle. OK, so we're checking. We're not going to write 1 yet. We're just going to find out. 3 fifths squared is the same as 3 squared over 5 squared. So this is 9 20 fifths. Negative 4 fifths squared is the same as negative 4 squared, which is 16, over 5 squared, which is 25. Altogether, that gives us 9 plus 16 over 25. And 9 and 16 gives us 25, I believe. So this is 25 over 25, which is in fact 1. So this point is on the unit circle. Which quadrant is it in? Well, it's got a positive x coordinate. So it's not over here on the left. It's got a negative y coordinate. So it's not up here. That means it must be somewhere down here. Okay, and if we wanted to be more particular, we could try and plot out fifths and find three of them and plot out fifths on the y-axis and find four of them and it might be something like that. Okay, questions about this one? If you want to find if a point is on the unit circle, you just need to square the x-coordinate, square the y-coordinate, add them together and make sure you get one. If you don't get one, it's not on the unit circle. If you do, it is. I'll go ahead and move to the next problem then. So the next problem will be is in a similar vein. This one is 16 and if you remember the previous question that we just did, this one will go real fast. So this one has instructions that say the point P is on the unit circle. Find the coordinates with the given information. So the given information is that we do not know the X coordinate, but we do know that the Y coordinate is negative 3 fifths. And we are told that X, whatever it is, must be positive. So what is x? And how do we find it? For those of you that are quick on the uptake here, what's the x-coordinate? You can throw it in chat or you can say it. <laughs> Is anyone still there? <laughs> Maybe I'll throw up the poll question here, make sure people are still around. What do we do in the last problem? We made sure that this point, 3 fifths, comma, negative 4 fifths, 
was on the unit circle. That's what we checked last time, and it was. Through that process of squaring, to check that, we got rid of this negative sign, essentially. So the negative sign doesn't matter, which, which means this negative sign really is not gonna matter. There's a nice little relationship here. That is the same number. So yes, good. So this one must be the same. The circle is full of symmetries like that. Full of symmetries. So we are going to know for sure, just from doing that previous problem, that this has to be either plus or minus four fifths. Which one? Well, x is positive, so it's plus four fifths. And that's just from the previous problem. How could we find this if we did not know that yet? Well, we, ha we, only, have, <laughs> we only have a little bit of stuff to work with. We only have this. So we don't know what x is, so we leave it alone. We know what y is, it's negative 3 fifths. So we square it, and we know that this is on the unit circle. So we just solve this, right? We get x squared equals 16 20 fifths. We square root both sides, and we get x equals plus or minus 4 fifths. Square root of 16 is 4, square root of 25 is 5. But we know it's positive, so it must be 4 fifths. Okay, I had a really long pause there until Roman broke the silence. Is this okay? Or were we still lost on this? Yes, I can. Okay. Um, okay, so let's get one that we don't know the answer to. So this one's 20. It's the same type of question. You're going to be given a little bit of information and from what you know, which is this equation, essentially this equation, and what's given in the problem, you need to find the all the coordinates. Okay, so the x coordinate is going to be negative two fifths. We do not know the y coordinate, so that's essentially what we're trying to find. And what we know is the point. I'm going to type this. This is painful to write like this, so that the point is above the x-axis. Okay, so what do we know about all these points up above the y-axis? What do we know about them? What do we know specifically about their y-coordinate? What do you think, Mariah? They are positive. Perfect. Yep, this problem was just trying to disguise that a little bit. So this here just means the y is going to be positive. So it's bigger than zero. Okay. Very good. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to rely on what we know, which is that every point on the unit circle satisfies this equation up here. So we know x is two, negative 2 fifths, so let's square it. 
So 4 25ths. We don't know what y is, so we're just going to leave it alone. And we know because this point is on the unit circle that when you square these two things and add them together, you get 1. So now we're just going to solve, right? We subtract the 4 25ths over, which gives us that y squared is 21 25ths. Right, 1 is equal to 25 over 25. So when I take away 4 of them, we're at 21 over 25 still. When you've got something like this then, you have y is, you're square rooting both sides, so plus or minus, the square root of 21 over 25, which is plus or minus, square root of 21 over the square root of 25, which is 5. And as Mariah told us, y must be positive, so we only take the negative, or sorry, we take the negative away is what I was trying to say. We take the negative away, and we're left with the positive. Okay, so the point is negative 2 fifths comma root 21 over 5. And that's it. So it's somewhere up here. If I were to try and mark out fifths, it'd be like this point right here. Okay, just as an estimate. All right, we'll go ahead and finish this type of problem and we'll move on to the next thing. So the reason we're talking about these points is because when you start talking about angles, which is what we're going to get at here with trig functions, angles are, well, they're made up of two rays and a vertex. So if I were to, say, give you this angle, there's sort of two, two, uh, two ways to describe it effectively. One of them is to take the whole circle and divide it up, sort of just, uh, I guess, at one point arbitrarily, but it, it just became like a, the, the thing that people do. They split it up in the circle into 360 equal things. We call those things degrees. So you're defining this angle in terms of how many of those pieces of the circle, how many of those 360 degrees um, that angle contains. Okay, so this, this angle has certain number of those 360 degrees in it. And that's that's the way that lots of students are taught um, circles. But there's been a push for the last like 20 years to get away from that because it's not it's not a way of defining the circle in terms of a property of the circle itself. And so a sort of a nicer way to think of the circle, right, is is not to define it from something exterior. It's it's to define it from something of the circle itself. And that thing we're going to describe it in terms of is its circumference. So the circumference of a circle is it's a property of the circle. It's 2 times pi times its radius. So the circumference is literally a multiple of the number of radius is, right? How many radii, if you, if you found this radii, how many of them do you need to stretch around this circle to get all the way around, well, it's exactly 2 pi of them. Okay? So we call these, this way of thinking about angles, we call this way of thinking about angles, uh, let me switch here to this, where your 
looking at the length of this arc, okay, we call that a radian amount. It's how many radii do you need in length to go from this point here to the terminal point here, where those two rays would intersect the circle. Okay, so this, this introduces the radian. Okay, and that's a unit of measure that defines an angle on a circle. So what do we need? We need to know to find radians or to find an angle, we need to know um, about points on the circle and, and the properties that they have. I'm going to try and clean up this circle here. So now whenever you're given an angle, usually what you're going to be given is, is some multiple of pi, although it doesn't need to be. So a radian, again, a radian is just a unit of length um, which describes an angle. Specifically, which angle? It's the angle that starts at the point one zero and ends at some other point called the terminal point and the radian amount is just the length of this arc. Okay, so the angle that I've drawn here is some angle just a little bit bigger than pi over two radians. Okay, so some easy ones here. An angle of pi over 2 is an angle of pi is an angle of 2 pi is. I'll fill these ones in here. In the unit circle, remember we've got a radius of 1. So how many radians, we'll start with this one, how many radians is it to go all the way around? It's 2 pi. This is exactly the circumference of the unit circle. So if you take a, an arc length that's exactly 2 pi in length, you're going to start at this point and you're going to find yourself back at that point because 2 pi radians is exactly the multiple of the radius that you need to go all the way around the circle. Is that, is that clear? Does that make sense? I hope it does. Okay, um, what's the next one? The next one would be either pi over 2 or pi. So let's take an angle of pi next. Oh, sorry, an angle of 2 pi is 2 pi. Oh, great. Good job. Uh, let me clean that up. What was I trying to say? I was trying to say is an angle that goes all the way around. <laughs> So if 2 pi goes all the way around the circle, because that's one full circumference of the circle, what is pi? Well, pi is just an angle that goes halfway around. Okay, sometimes that confuses students um, because it, it's like a whole amount of pi, right? It, it's, it's a whole number. It's just all of pi. But we need to remember that the circumference is 2 pi. So pi is this angle here, 
and it goes it only stretches halfway around okay and then an angle of pi over 2 is an angle that goes one quarter the way around so we've got 2 pi we've got pi and now we've got half of that pi which is pi over 2. There's another one that goes to right here that's really commonly used and this is 3 pi over 2. And These are all really really common ones. Uh, there, there's more really really common ones like multiples of pi over 6 uh, are the really common ones. Multiples of pi over 4 are really common ones and I talk all about that in the lecture. So this, for this first section, there's a lot of questions that give you an angle and then ask you, what is the terminal point? What are the specific coordinates of it? So we've, we've already looked at verifying that certain points are on the unit circle, you know, knowing some x coordinate, knowing some y coordinate, or knowing both and then verifying. But now what we need to do is we need to make this, this jump to, given an angle, can we find the point and the x and the y coordinate of it on the unit circle. Okay, can we do that? So I'll start with a few easy ones and then I'll go to a harder one. Um, and then I'm going to tell you something that every everyone but maybe one of you has not heard. And it, it requires some memorization. Okay, so let's start with some easy ones. As a tip, I always, 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 always recommend drawing a unit circle along with either the whole, the whole x and y axis pair or just the x axis. It, having at least one of them can really, really make your life easier. It doesn't need to be perfect. You know that about making graphs in here doesn't have to be perfect it just needs to be good enough good enough for you to make accurate estimates okay so angles radian measures are often given the variable T um, they're not given X they're not given the variable Y and that's because oftentimes we're gonna talk about a point which has some X and Y coordinate and so we're not gonna use we're not going to use these as the variable for our angle. Okay, that, that would really confuse everyone. Another common thing to see is to use something like this or something like this. Okay, and, and there's others too, but these are just two Greek letters. This first one is theta, and the second one is phi. Okay, so they're just you know, math people, they, when they're thinking to themselves, what letter should we use, which variable letter should we use to describe this certain thing? They were thinking to themselves, I've already used X and Y and Z and W like a trillion times. I need to come up with new <laughs> variables. Um, and there's only 26 in the English alphabet, right? So they, they branched out and these became really common commonly used for angles as well uh, theta and phi so um, don't worry about those they're just letters to describe something all right so now I'm just gonna give you some some angles and I want to know if you can find the terminal point so I'm gonna make sort of a table here so this is a table of T and this is the terminal point P 
x, y. So I just want to know the coordinates. Alright. Here's some easy ones. 0 pi over 2 pi 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi. What are the terminal points? And remember that we always start here and we go this far around the unit circle, whatever that length is. So this is T. And I'm asking you for the X and the Y coordinates for all of these points. Go ahead and list them off. Well, I certainly expected, yeah, I certainly expected the first one to at least come up really quickly. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, it's zero, zero. Uh, no, 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 wait, wait. That's the same mistake that I always make. Perfect. It's one, zero. Thank you, Roman. Yeah, uh, yeah, this, this is the point, zero, zero. Alex, when you watch the lectures, you're going to get a good, kick, a good kick out of that because I don't know how many times I said that. And I was laughing at myself at one point. And I decided not to re-record it. So it's in there still. Yeah, so if this length is nothing, we start here and we end here. And this is the point because this is the, this is the unit circle with radius 1. This is the point 1, 0. So this here is 1, 0. Because this is the angle where we don't have an angle. It's a flat angle, if you will. We, we pick the first ray, which goes out in the x direction, and the second ray also goes out in the x direction. Very good. Okay, what's next? This is probably the, the easy one. The next easy one. Jacob's just listing them out. It's a good effort. It's good, good effort, Jacob. The first one is right. None of the others are. But I like where you're going with them. Uh, the y coordinate of your second one is correct, the y coordinate of your third one is correct, and the fourth one, and the fifth one, but your x coordinates are all wrong. So Jacob, you listed out the first point, totally fine. The other ones, all the y coordinates are right, but, but all of the x coordinates are wrong. So maybe you can quickly think about that and correct it. There's one one key tip. One key tip is that we're working with circumfer the circumference of a circle, which is in our case two pi. 
and we're asking ourselves if instead of going all the way around, that's 2 pi, I only went this amount around or this amount around or this amount around, how, what, sorry, what fraction of 2 pi are these things? For example, pi over 2 is 2 pi over 4. So we take a fourth of the circle is what we're doing for that one. Uh, Jacob, I see you put up two more. The second point right here, negative one zero, what angle does that correspond to? It's one of these three that, that have arrows next to them. It corresponds with pi. Yep, so that is correct, negative one zero. Now the first one you gave is this point, and that's not on the unit circle. It's at a height of one and over one. That would be uh, one, one, no, zero, one. Zero, one, yes. That is right here, and that corresponds to what angle? Pi over two. Pi over two, very good. So yeah, I, I mentioned this before, but two pi is all the way around, right? So it's, we go through four quadrants. One, two, three, four. So if I if I know that this is one fourth of two pi, if I can just sort of reason through that and see it, then I know that that point zero one. Oops want to get rid of those. There we go. I know that this point zero one corresponds to that angle pi over two. Okay, now it's symmetry of the circle makes this last one easy. Because instead of going one fourth the way around, we're gonna go three of those around. Three of those fourths. Three times pi over two means three of those. So one, two, three. So we end up at a terminal point here. This length is three pi over two. And the symmetry of the circle would say we're just at this point, negative one, uh, sorry, zero, negative one. Okay, and then 2 pi, that's that's the painfully easy one because that brings us all the way around the circle, right? So what point do we end up at? What's our terminal point? It's still this one, which has the coordinate 1, 0. All right, if I gave you a quiz right now, <laughs> how would you do? My guess would be two thirds of you would not do too hot based on what I've seen here from the chat. Let's do some more. Let's do let's do one that takes a little bit of a little bit more. I hope I hope that part was clear, right? If that was not clear you need to let me know. Like now. son is telling me it, it wasn't clear but all right so I'm assuming that was clear and we're gonna take the next step which is to look at an angle which is not a nice like quarter of the way around or you know whatever we're gonna look at an angle that is an eighth of the way around 
So that angle is pi over 4. Okay, so that's the same as 2 pi over 8, which essentially means we're looking at a length which goes to right here. It ends right about there. If we take the circle and break it into fourths, what do we get? We get all of these. One, two, three, four parts. If we break it into eighths, we get one, two, three, four, five, six. Hold the phone. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I miscounted somewhere along the way. There's eight pieces there. <laughs> okay, so if we break it into eighths, we arrive at these locations on the circle. And if we want to know about this one in particular, that corresponds to pi over four. Radians. Okay. So the question is, what is that point? This is the most trivi trivial of the non-trivial. So this is the easiest of the not easy problems. It requires sort of a, a jump, a leap, and a little bit of knowledge that we had before at the beginning of this lecture. So let's start with that. What is the thing that tells us all of the points on the unit circle? It, for that matter, any graph. What is the thing that helps you find all the points on a graph? I know you may not have the ability to answer this at this point, but I'm throwing it up anyway. My other question still stands. What is the thing, you can think about this, what is the thing that tells you all the points? We used it for several problems at the beginning. What is the thing that helps us find every point. We used it to verify points. What is it? Well, I'll go ahead and it's the equation, right? X squared plus Y squared. Yeah, exactly, Briar. X squared plus Y squared is one. I mean, this, this is the thing that if I gave you a random X and Y coordinate, you'd be able to say, yeah, it's on the unit circle or no, it's not. Now, this is the thing that tells you all of the pairs, every single pair that, that gives you a point on the unit circle. Okay. So, this, along with the knowledge that we've gone exactly halfway through this angle, that's, that's all we're going to use to try and find this x and y coordinate. So if we've gone exactly halfway through that angle, what would your guess be about a relationship between x and and why.
What do you think? I'll get back to that poll question later, but what do we think? Well, one way to think about it is with triangles. This is a this is a very nice way to think about it. So we we go f from this point up a certain amount. We also have gone over a certain amount. <clears throat> And what do we know if we've gone exactly halfway through that part of the circle? Well, we know what we've created here is actually a, a square. So if we think about any one of these triangles, oops, that's still a square. If we think about any one of these triangles that's inside here, in particular, we'll do this one. What do we know about the width? and the height of this triangle. Well, they're the same. If we go over x, we go up y, because we've gone exactly halfway through this quarter of the circle, we know the width and the height of that triangle are the same, i.e. That means x equals y, <clears throat> right? Is that that's clear, right? That, that's that's got to be like a <clears throat> an ah uh, moment. Because if it's not, if you don't believe me already, <laughs> we got to sort that. <clears throat> okay, now if x equals y, this equation simplifies quite a bit. It means that we can write it like this. Whatever that, whatever that point is, x, y, x equals y. So 2x squared is the same as saying x squared plus x squared. We just swap the y with the x. And now we can solve. This means that x squared is 1 half. And what number do we square to get 1 half? Well, that's the square root of 1 half, either the plus or the minus. Okay. And that's, that's perfectly acceptable as it is. Uh, usually this is simplified to be um, plus or minus. 1, that's the square root of 1, over root 2. Even more commonly, this is rationalized in the denominator to give us plus or minus root 2 over 2. But which of these is it? Well, this point, this terminal point is in the first quadrant, which means that we only take the positive. So what is the terminal point's coordinates for an angle of pi over 4? It's root 2 over 2, comma, root 2 over 2. Okay. Okay, let me ask you another one. And then based on your answers, we'll move on. How about this angle? What is the terminal point? What are the coordinates for the terminal point of the angle 3 pi over 4? pi over 4 has that terminal point there. 3 pi over 4 has p of x comma y equal to what? 
I claim that you should be able to do this pretty quickly. So if you can, we'll move on. If not, we'll keep going here. So the first step would be to locate this on the unit circle. So in which quadrant is this point? That, that's a good question. In which quadrant? Or specifically, where is it? Now I would think about this angle, 3 pi over 4, as a multiple of the previous one we just did. All right, it's 3 pi over 4. Instead of just pi over 4, it's 3 of them. So pi over 4 was halfway through that first quadrant. So 2 of them is at the top of that y-axis there. And 3 of them is halfway through the second quadrant. So here's pi over 4. If we go another one of those, we arrive right at the top. That's 2 pi over 4, which is pi over 2. And if we go another one, we arrive right here. That's 3 pi over 4. That's 3 of those previous angles. Now there's a lot of symmetry here in the circle. So what do we know about the coordinates of this point because of where we ended up? Because this is a multiple of this one. Right, right, it's, it's symmetric, right, so what do we know about, or what do you mean by that, I guess is my question. That's what I said. What do you mean by it's symmetrical? What do we know about this point? Maybe you could just tell me it straight up, Mariah. Like you would be the same point as square root over two. Uh, this, the same point as like over here. Yeah, there's a lot of... There's a symmetry here. This point on the right essentially is just a reflection of of this point on the left. Right? That's exactly right. So what do we know about the coordinates then? With reflections across the y-axis, what do you do with coordinates? What happens to the y-coordinate? If you reflect a point over the y-axis, what happens to the y-coordinate? And more specifically, it's still positive and it's... Negative. Well, that should be negative. Okay, okay, I, th I think I see what... Specifically, they're exactly the same in value, right, for the y-coordinate. Exactly. Right, because you just you just reflected across the y-axis. And the x you said was negative, correct. Yep. But still the same number. Okay. Okay. That did not go as quickly as I thought. It was so I'm, I'm going to ask you these two points now. This point has the coordinate negative root 2 over 2 
root 2 over 2. What is the angle associated with that one? And this one, positive root 2 over 2, negative root 2 over 2 for the coordinate. What's the angle associated with those? So that's my next question. What are the angles associated with these coordinates? So the repeated question here, what are the angles associated with these coordinates? Think about the values of these coordinates. Think about multiples of, a, of this one, which was pi over 4, just like I did when looking for the coordinates of this point. Right, because of the symmetries of reflections of the circle, we see these are the same numbers, but with different signs as these. Oh, this one over here, I, I misplaced a negative sign. There we go. Um, because of the symmetries of the reflections on a circle, these values are the same as these over here, except some negative signs are different. Right? There's some negative signs here on the left, and there's one on the right. We know we're still dealing with a similar angle. So the question is, is much more basically, how many pi over fours do we need to arrive at this point? And how many pi over fours do we need to arrive at this point? Because once you've counted them, it's just a multiplication problem to find that angle. <laughs> what do you think, Giselle? How about for this one? How many multiples of pi over 4 do we need to get to this one? Okay, Jay, what do you think? So this angle here is pi over 4. We, we've gone here, and it's exactly halfway through this first quadrant's angle. How many of these pi over 4s do we need to stretch all the way around to this one? What do you think, Jay? Yeah, Alex, it's just as painful for you as it is for me, isn't it? 
Okay, it is five, yes, okay. That's because two of them get here, another two go here, and then one more here. So that's five. So we're working with five pi over four here. Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I don't know what the correct phrase is here. I'm just gonna give you this last one. The angle that wraps around here is another two right beyond five is another two That's seven pi over four we know these because these points have the same x and y absolute values which means they're just reflections of this original point up here about the x and y axis which means the same same properties hold that this is exactly like this angle here is exactly the same angle as this one. It's just been rotated. And this angle here is exactly the same as that one. It's just been rotated around the circle. And this angle here is exactly the same. Those are all pi over four angles. All right. Alex, how can I best help you? <laughs> I feel like you're the only one here sometimes. And Mariah, you're doing great too. And Briar, thank you. Haven't heard much from others. The next section is uh, trig functions. I I have no idea if if you all are ready for those because this this stuff we're doing now is very foundational. Um, very foundational because trig functions literally just, they're functions that tell you X coordinates and they tell you Y coordinates. So if you can't, if we're, if we're having real difficulties here, then we need to sort this out. But I don't, I can't understand silence. I don't know if silence means you get it or if you don't get it. So for those of you that are here, do you want me to keep working on this for the last 15 minutes? Do you want me to move on to the next section? 5.2. Sorry, yet. That was an either or. So do you want me to work on this section still? That's a yes for that. You probably said that quickly. Okay, 5.1 then, we'll keep going. Um, okay, okay, great. Yeah, so that's really helpful. Thank you, Alex. Thank you a lot. Um, so there's a really, 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 I can't understate this, a really key idea that we just sort of used in that previous problem. It's that the circle has a ton of symmetry and we can we can exploit that kind of. Um, for example, I gave you one angle here. I said this one is exactly pi over four. And we found the xy coordinate and then I asked you about three other points. And sort of miraculously, because of the symmetries here, we knew all about those points too. And a key, very key idea, is that all of these points share a common reference number, is what it's called, or a reference angle sometimes. That's what I prefer to call it by, but your book prefers number. If I were to measure all of these lengths that I just drew in, these other three, if I were to measure them with a ruler or maybe cut this original piece of the circle out and then lay it on these other ones, what I would find is that they're all the exact same length. 
So what I'm illustrating is this, is that if you take any angle, which I will draw here in, that's a good one, dark green. If I took any angle, so I'll start at one zero and I'll go around and I'm gonna stop here. If I draw an angle like this, where the remaining bit, so the remaining bit here between the x-axis and that terminal point, if that remaining piece is the same as this one here, then I know that the x and y coordinates are the same with maybe some modifications with pluses or minuses. Okay, so I could take that green one and I know that the coordinate of this point because this reference number is the same as this angle, I know that that point is x, y. This one has a negative x though because that's a reflection across the y-axis. If I pick a different angle, this time I'll, in dark green, draw for this one. So I go all the way around, and I'm gonna go a little bit further to this point. Here, I can't think of this as like the extra bit to complete it, but what I'm thinking of here is the distance like I said before, the distance from this terminal point to the x-axis, because that is the same as this angle over here, it's just a rotation of that angle around the circle. Because of that, I know the coordinates of this terminal point for the green angle have the exact same x and y but because of where this point is in the circle, the coordinates are just negated. If I do this just even one more time, we'll find, if I go all the way around the circle to get to this point and look at, again, this difference between the nearest point on the x-axis and our terminal point if I find that that is also pi over four, like our first one, then we know that these that this terminal point has the same coordinates x, y, but we've got a negative y because of where it is on the circle. This, this is this exact idea of a reference number. So a big portion of this section, and I use this all throughout the next section and the next one, um, a big portion of this section is just finding reference numbers. <clears throat> so let's try and find some reference numbers. I don't know. I'm just going to make some stuff up. 17 pi over 3. What's the reference number? That's an ugly angle. It is ugly. So let's, let's try and plot it. And that might help. I'm going to go with just the drawing of the positive x-axis and the negative x-axis. I'm gonna leave the y-axis out of it for this one. Because reference angles only care about the x-axis and your terminal point. That's all they care about. So what is this angle? Where does it end? So it starts here at one zero and 17 pi over three. Well, remember pi is over here. Like this, this arc length of pi brings us there. That's the same as three pi over three, isn't it? So if I go all the way around, I'm at two pi and that's six pi over three. If I go all the way around, that's six pi over three. If I go around another halfway, what's my angle? Well, I've gone three pi over three further, so now we're at nine pi over three. 
If I go another halfway around, we're at 12. If I go another, we're at 15. So here we go. We're at 15, and that's getting pretty close. Is that clear where I'm at so far? Going around the circle is one time is 2 pi, right? If I write that in terms of thirds, the denominator of this angle that we're, we've been given, that's 6 pi over 3. So to even find the terminal point of this angle, we need to go around 1, 2 times, and then another half, and then more yet still. If I go all the way, this brings us to 18 pi over 3. 3 times around is 18 pi over 3. That's too far. Our angle is just 17. So how do we think of this? Well, we think of this last pi that we went through in terms of thirds. We want to go just an additional 2 thirds of that to go from 15 thirds <coughs> of pi to 17 <coughs> thirds of pi. <coughs> Excuse me. So where's the terminal point? Well, it's two thirds around this bottom part of the circle. It's right here. So this angle, <clears throat> it's kind of a nasty one, but it illustrates the point very well. This angle has us going around the unit circle one, two, and two-thirds around this bottom part. This, this angle is really kind of like that. But what's the reference angle? What is the angle formed between the x-axis? So that's this guy. What is the angle formed between the x-axis and this terminal point? What is this angle? It doesn't matter how ugly the original angle was. Now we know this was 17 pi over 3. And I've conveniently left, oh, it's not 45 degrees. I've left this one up. How far apart are these two angles? 18 pi over 3 was going around 3 full times. 17 pi over 3 was not quite going around 3 full times. How far off are they? Well, we just got to do a little subtraction at this point. So we got 17 taken away from 18, which leaves us with just 1. So we've got 1 pi over 3 left. That's a pi over 3 angle. which in terms of degrees is actually 60 degrees. Yep, yep. Okay, this, this angle is a good angle to look at because it illustrates the exact process by which you find all reference angles. You're trying to find the shortest arc length between the x-axis and your original angle. So what you're, what you're going to do is you're going to take a formula like this. You're going to take your angle t and you're going to subtract multiples of pi until you get the smallest possible difference. 
All right, so multiples of pi. Here's zero pi right there. We haven't gone anywhere. Here's one pi on the left. Here's two pi on the right. Here's three pi on the left. Here's four pi on the right. <laughs> right? We just keep you know oscillating back and forth between multiples of pi being on the right and on the left. And just like in this problem where we subtracted one of those multiples of pi from our angle, that's how we find any reference angle. We find the closest multiple of pi to our given angle. We take the difference. Now, notice the order. I switched it around over here. I took a multiple of pi minus our angle. The reason I did that is because reference numbers are always positive. We are always relating angles to angles in the first quadrant up here. We're always using our reference angles to represent an angle in the first quadrant. So reference angles are always positive. So for this formula, the way to do that is to just throw absolute values around it. So the reference angle formulaically if that's even, is that a word? I suspect that's a word. A formula for the reference angle is the smallest of these guys for any n that you pick. So you want to minimize this value, the absolute value of t minus pi n, where you're just picking different n's. Start off with 0, then pick 1, then t pick 2. Or you can, like what I did with this big angle, actually count out how many it needs to be. Right? We found 2 would give us this angle, but 3 multiples of pi gives us all the way over here, which is a smaller angle here than so n was 3 for us. You can do that by inspection, by discovery. Okay. Well, today felt rough for me. I don't know how it felt for you. I hope it, I, I, I suspect everything we did was clear. I don't know. Um, um, just to, again, forecast, we're, all, we're out of time. I'm over by one minute already. Um, homework for, sorry, quiz. The quiz for sections four, three, four, four, and four, five, is, that's this Friday. Um, I have office hours tomorrow. We're open tomorrow. I hope you all enjoyed uh, your World Table Tennis Day yesterday, having no classes. Um, I got out and planted some potatoes and worked the garden a bit. It was nice. Um, next week, homework for these sections is due. So shoot me some questions over email if you've got them, or come to office hours tomorrow if, you, if you've got questions already. Um, there's office hours next week, Tuesday and Thursday, as, as usual. There's a quiz on this material next Friday. And again, just to forecast it one more time, we've got a test coming up on the 22nd and 23rd of April. That's chapters 3 through 5. OK? So thank you for coming today, if you're here. And uh, I'll see you all next time, OK? You're welcome, Briar. You're welcome, Mariah.